Yo mama. Yo Hi and hello and welcome to my page of Dose of Devotion. My name is Shannon and today we have a newly published author, April Stubbs. April, uh, she's going to come on today and just share a little bit about how the Lord really used her and her gifts and her calling to write a fabulous book. This book is called Come to the River. It's just been published and it's now available on... You can get it at Walmart. I'll shop locally in Front Royal at the Royal Oak Bookstore, and it can be ordered online uh, through Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Awesome! So check those, uh, check all those places out, and look for her book. So today, um, we kind of just want to go over on how the <clears throat> Lord really stirred her and used her in this gift to publish this book to reach many lives. So I have a few questions that I'm going to ask April, and she's going to share from her heart. So I really, I really appreciate you coming on today and sharing what the Lord is doing in you and through you. So thank you so much. Um, so to start off with, one of the questions is, how did you come up with the title "Come to the River"? Is it significant, and why? Uh, well, yes, it is significant. Come to the river. Um, all of my life, uh, I always went to the Shenandoah River um, to find solace when I was troubled in my spirit. I had lots of um, picnics at the river. Uh, when there were times that I needed to pray through something, I went to the river. Um, when I found, uh, had gotten bad report that my dad had cancer. I mm. went to the river to pray and to cry. Um, I've witnessed a lot of people at the river. The river has always been just a very special place. Just listen to the water come over the dam. I have a lot of wonderful memories mm. about the Shenandoah River. And when I decided to write this book, um, as the uh, plot formed in my spirit and in my mind, um, that's how I came up with that title. Awesome. That's so cool. I love how Shenandoah, too. It's like home away from home when you read the book. You pick it up and you start feeling out these familiar subjects, these familiar areas. You're like, I know where that is. It's so, it's so fun. So definitely look forward to it. Um, my next question that I have is, can you please share a glimpse of what this book is about and how it relates to you? Well, yes, this book is, of course, uh, fiction, Christian fiction. Um, I I hate to give it the genre genre of a romance, but it is <laughs> it's a romance of um, uh, my husband Donna, um, as well as a romance between my Lord and I. Amen. So um, this particular setting is about identical twin sisters and the very opposite lives uh, that they led, and um, you you tend to. You know write about what you know mm -hmm. so my family and friends and things I've learned in church and dates that Donna I had are all wrapped up in the plot of this book awesome that's so cool so I do I remember I see a lot of Don in it and it's so cool it's like I could so totally see him doing that <laughs> and a lot of you I'm sure will be able to notice those little sneak peeks right so okay number three is what was your uh, motive for writing this book and did anybody inspire you in particular Motive and inspiration. Well, let me go way back. Um, when I was a little girl, back about 1966, 67, uh, in the second grade, um, I came down with hepatitis A uh, virus. Um, several children in the class got this, and I missed a lot of school. Hmm. And during that time that I was in the hospital and home recuperating, I had missed phonics but nobody really noticed that, and I really didn't know how to sight read very well. Hmm. Um, when I went on to the third grade, I couldn't read. I could read just a, wow. a tiny bit, but children don't know how to express themselves. Hmm. And I remember being frustrated and embarrassed because everyone could read but me. Hmm. And my teacher's name, I'll never forget, was Maud Steins, wow. Mrs. Steins, <laughs> and we had a spelling bee, and half the class was on one side of the room and half on the other, and I'll never forget the word that she called out to me was Halloween, and I said H-A-L-L-O-W, and she said, April, look at me, and I timidly looked at her, and she said, Halloween, 
And I thought, what if, what is she doing? <laughs> and I said, H-A-L-L-O-W. She said, no, watch me, Halloween. And I got tears in my eyes and I Aww. said, H-A-L-L-O-W. <laughs> and she let it go. Well, every day she had a special helper, an assistant, and it was a coveted position to be chosen to be her assistant. Mm. And you would, uh, during recess, instead of going out to play, um, you would run errands for her and then you grab copies and dust the erasers and that sort of thing. And that day she said, would you be my helper? So when everyone went out to play, she took me um, up and sat me in the first seat and she went out and got the phonics chart out of the closet. And she began to point it out and in just a very few minutes, um, there was a little picture of a cake, an A with a little dash over the A for the long A, mm -hmm. and a cat with a little, you know, little thing over the A for the for the short A, and all of a sudden it and clicked. clicked. And just in a moment, I learned to sight read, and I began to weep. Oh! And she came over, and I Aww. just clung to her leg and just cried and cried mm. it was just such a relief and she took me by the hand and took me down to the uh, school library and at that time the school was the first through the sixth grade and the library was divided first grade second grade and i was in the third grade and she took me to the sixth grade section <laughs> she plucked a book off the shelf and she said wow. i want you to read this and next wow. week you give me an oral book report and it happened to be the autobiography of cecil b demille <clears throat> excuse me and i read that book mm. and i told her the next week and she bragged on me and she said, now you're no longer allowed to check out anything under a sixth grade level. And throughout that wow. year, when she would walk up and down the rows, she would bend down and whisper to me, you're my star student. <laughs> and you're, I'm going to prophesy over you. And at the end of the year, you're not only going to win the spelling bee for mm. our class, you're going to win the spelling bee for the whole school. Oh, man. And I did. Oh, how cool is that? And she said, throughout the year, she would say, I'm going to prophesy over you. You're going to love to read books more than anything in the mm. world. They'll be your friends. You can travel all over the world. I'm going to prophesy that someday you're going to write your own book oh, and it's going to be published. Oh, my goodness. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I know, right? And that little story stayed on the inside oh, of me all these years. That's precious. All these years. That's and that's precious. the truth. Wow. wow. And, as, and as far as how it actually came to fruition, I've always been a big reader. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was sitting years ago, I don't even know how many years ago, um, I was sitting on the porch and reading and I finished a book and I was so disappointed with the ending and I said I could write a better book than this and Don <laughs> challenged that. me he's like well do it yeah and that was just on the inside of me and mm. and I I had stories on the inside of me and I got my laptop and I would begin to swing and I'd pray and I'd pray in the spirit and the scene would come to me and I would just start typing I'm green I'm a novice yeah I may not have done things correctly but it sure was fun to make Amen. up a story. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I love also how the Lord used somebody else to impart into April, to encourage her and to point out those gifts that she has. And it's really it's valuable and it's very um, powerful, influential how that happens. So just pay attention to those around you. You never know. We hear what they're saying. Hey, man, you're really good at that. Maybe that's the gift that God's called you to do. Amen. Um, and also keep your eyes open for others that are around you. Maybe you have friends or family members. Um, maybe you have employees, other co-workers that you're noticing things that they're really good at. You know, call those things forth. You know, prophesy over them. Encourage them. You never know where it'll lead them. Amen. That's so, so good. You know, for a long time time um, you know, it's not good to compare yourself to others yeah but I thought well what am I good at you know I, I, I can't do this I can't do that but I've always been a great storyteller yes so, <laughs> yes you know the Lord uses what you have because yeah. he's the one that gave it to you Amen. so we need to not minimize that's right uh, what we think isn't a big deal it really was a gift that he gave me that's right that's true and everybody has a gift we yes. just have to tap into what it is and yep. have the courage to step out and use yep. it yep and the more you step out the more faithful you are and the more the Lord will reward you with with other opportunities more opportunities and, and the anointing on it will get stronger
strong or the anointing on it will increase because you're being faithful, you're being willing, and you're being obedient to what the Lord's called you to do. Praise the Lord. So now my next question is, uh, how, lo how long did you prepare before Come to the River was published and um, dis distributed? How long did I prepare? A long time. Um, I think because it was more of a hobby mm -hmm. and I would write on, you know, write a little bit and, you know, the cares of the world and being busy, mm -hmm. you know, take over. And I wasn't on a, I wasn't on a time frame. It was just something that I did a little story that started yeah. a long, long time ago. And I'd go on vacation. I'd go to the beach, take my laptop. I'd write a few chapters here and there. But after um, Don passed away, then I really got serious about mm. it. So, um, what, what was your question? How long? Just how long it took before it was published and distributed. Now, as far as the publishing, you know, it, it took about a year, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a it's a long process. Yeah. You, you you have to you have to do each little thing, and then mm. it takes you know a couple of months for them to get back to you, and so it's a lot more than meets the eye behind the scenes. But it was. It was a dream come true for yeah, me. I've yeah. always wanted to be a published author, and I am. Um, I guess the reason why I want to ask that, though, also is because, like, you know, it's a lot of times preparation is the hardest part. The waiting is the hardest part because it's not like it's in your hands. It's not in your control. you got to wait on the Lord to, to act on it and, and to, to accelerate it or, or to move on to the next step. And there's seasons for things. So, right. uh, But it's worth it, right? It's it worth is. it in the end. And to be able to say, I published this, you know, that's, yeah. really, that's really cool. So patience, you know, perseverance, that's part of it. So if you're in the process, if you're in the preparation part of your season, you know, stay hopeful be expecting because God God's in the work he's he's in it now he's doing all that he needs to do in order to to make it prosper amen all right so um, the next thing I have here um, yeah number five did you experience any hindrances if so how did you overcome those well I certainly didn't have a lot of self-confidence that I mm. was you know a real author point. and it kept me from stepping forward to actually have it published writing a story is one thing and having it published is a different world I was mm -hmm. I was afraid I didn't know you know if it would be successful um, I didn't know what to do you know I, w w w I've got a story now what do I do yeah it takes a lot of effort I went to some uh, writing seminars and did a lot of, you know, read a lot of blogs and asked a lot of questions. And so I think I was my own biggest hindrance. But once I um, had it in my heart um, that I felt a green light, mm -hmm. not only a green light from the Lord, but do it and do it now. Yeah. You know, pushing me, don't keep waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Don't keep waiting. That's good. Then once I made the decision, yeah. then uh, it was exciting after that. It was Amen. like, no matter what, I'm going to get this yeah. done. I love that. I remember you saying, this is my baby. So it's got to right. be a little challenging to, you know, share your baby with the whole world. You know, it's one thing to, to share it with your closest friend when the whole world has an opportunity to see it. it it's can, very it can be, vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. But um, I'm proud of you. That took courage. Thanks, and brave. You were brave and you went with it with gusto. And so I'm just personally proud. Okay, so um, number six. Would you say that the Lord had his hand in the process and how? You kind of mentioned a little bit on that on the last one. but um, I do feel like he had his hand in the process there there were some things that I thought I would write about but I didn't it I wasn't um, the scenes weren't coming to yeah. me it was when I would come aside and pray in the spirit yeah. and wait on the Lord that's good and then all of a sudden it would just roll out that's so good yeah that's so good. when I wrote this I really felt that the story was inspired now true I I did use you know, my dates with Dawn and different relatives because you write what you know. But yeah. as far as the actual storyline, I really felt from the Lord to write what I did. Amen. Amen. Well, and it makes it relatable too. You know, they're, they're getting fed spiritually, but then they're also enjoying it too, because it, it can happen to anybody. If it happened to you, it can happen to you, you know? And so that's, right. what's really cool about this book too, because they're all ordinary experiences that we that's all right. make, but the Holy Spirit's involved. Amen. So that's really cool. Um, so what would you like to share with the viewers out here um, that would help them maybe to step out and, and to do what the Lord has called them to do in this season that they're in? Well, I would say that um, the, 
the first and foremost thing I want to encourage you to do is to come aside and spend some quality time with yes. the Lord on a consistent basis. Yeah. We all need to have our daily devotions, and um, the Lord knows all of our um, needs. He knows all of our busy schedules, but He'll meet you wherever you are, even if you only have five minutes. Um, it, you can build on that. Just make the determination mm -hmm. that you're going to spend that time with the Lord and ask him what he has for you. He'll keep bringing it back to your spirit. You can't get away from yeah. it. It's that yeah, thought. It's, true. it's that thing. And then he begins to put people in your life mm. to speak life into you, to encourage you, to help you financially, to connect the dots. Mm. So he definitely has a plan and we want to get in step with it and not wait don't wait any longer you waited long enough that's the world right. needs to hear your voice god Now's gave you a voice that's now's right. the time amen all right so again i know earlier in the beginning of this um in interview i kind of um asked you or told maybe where you can get this book but do you mind repeating it for our viewers sure. where can we get a copy of come to the river okay again come to the river uh, by April Stenson Stubbs, S-T-U-B-B-S. And right now it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and the Royal Oak Bookstore and my church, Dynamic Life Praise and Worship Center. They're going to carry it in the church library. And um, soon it will be available on Kindle. They're working on that right now. And some other bookstores as well. I'm going to be having some book signings as soon as the uh, restrictions lift with the COVID-19. Awesome. Ah, Our coffee so shop, cool. the Dynamic Life mm -hmm. Campus um, coffee shop on Main Street, we'll be having some book signings there as well as some other places. It's going to be a good time. So I look forward to it. Yes, it's going to be so much fun. So, and last but not least, I know everybody is just drumlining it. Do we expect to see another book in the near future or in the future, I should say? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm writing the sequel right now. And to give you a little sneak peek, it's called the Bel Air House. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited already. I can't wait. Oh, that's the first time I've heard it personally, I think. You've told me that. That's so exciting. Ah. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you've been able to receive from this. I hope this was maybe a big uh, finger pointing the way, the direction of, of what to do, or maybe encourage you to step out a little bit and experience uh, and explore what the Lord has put on your heart. So uh, thank you again so much. And I'd like to thank April for joining me today on A Dose of Devotion. Everybody have a good day. And until next time, God bless you. Yo, mama. Yo, mama. Get a girl. Get a girl. Oh, 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 oh. Okay.